Hey guys, I wanted to work through an example in a project that we did recently. Um, <clears throat> we ran into some trouble because of a, an effect called loading. And basically what it means is you develop some resistor network to establish some voltages or some currents. And then everything is working great. And then you connect something to that network. And the effect of connecting this other stuff changes the behavior of the network that you designed in the first place. And that generally is, is called loading. So here I have a simple, it's a dumb example. I've got a four volt supply and I've got four 1K resistors. And if I run this guy, you'll see that the voltage at this junction is one volt, two volts, three volts, and of course, four volts. It's a four volt supply with four 1K resistors. So it's a voltage divider and each resistance gets one volt. And I have a milliamp flowing through the, the series the chain. And then the idea is, well, I, I might want to light up an LED. And so this is a three volt junction. So I maybe I could connect that three volts through some kind of current limiting resistor to an LED and then use that to power my LED. So let's, uh, let's see what happens when I do that. <clears throat> so here I go. I got an LED here. I'm going to connect that guy to ground. And it's a it's a two volt LED. I think the default is two volts here. So I need, if I have another volt, I have three volts. So I, I, I would need some kind of a, <clears throat> because it's a two volt LED, if I connect it directly to three volts, I'm going to get a lot of current. So I need some kind of a current limiting resistor here. It's a two volt LED. This is three volts. So I'm going to have one volt. If I want to go 10 milliamps, right, I need to make this 100 ohms. So let's go ahead and Dial that guy down to 100 ohms. There you have it. <clears throat> and uh, and we should be good. This should be 3 volts. This will be 2 volts. The difference will be 1 volt and 100 ohms. That's 10 milliamps. And and we're good. So let's run it and see what happens. And it's, it's terrible. The current now, instead of 10 milliamps, I'm only getting 2 milliamps. And 1.5 of them only are going through the LED. And only a half a milliamp now is going through my my uh, resistor chain. And and notice instead of one volt, this is only half a volt here. I this used to be two volts. Now it's one and a quarter. And this used to be three volts. And now it's dropped down to one point eighty eight. So the problem is, I had a nice resistor chain here to give me a series of voltages, but the fact that I've loaded it down to try to run this LED has completely distorted. The voltages in my chain. So if I want to do this, if I really want to keep these voltages the same, I've got to isolate somehow the the current demands of this diode from the currents and voltages of my resistor network. Um, or I've I've got to have a lot more current in this chain, only uh, a tiny fraction of which is going to be stolen by the the LED. But then I'll be wasting tons of power in my uh, resistor ladder. So the trick, of course, as we discussed last time, is to have some kind of insulation. The simplest practical insulation in the laboratory that you can, or in the design tool bench or whatever, is just a uh, an op amp. So I'll just make a follower op amp that gets that measures the basically it, it you connect one input, the uh, non-inverting input of the op amp to the point in the resistor network that you want to use to establish the voltage. And then you can take the output of the op amp, which is very low impedance output, low resistance output, and it can drive a lot of current. And so you can use that guy to run the LED. This input draws almost no current at all. So let's run it now and see what happens. Aha, see now I'm back up at one amp. This guy draws zero amps, right? But my op amp is driving 10 milliamps. So it's running my LED at 10 milliamps and I'm happy. If I wanted to make it uh, more like 20 milliamps, which would be a strongly driven LED, I can do that. I can dial, turn down the resistance here, let things settle down. And you'll see now I'm at 15 milliamps. If I go down to 50 ohms, I'll be at 20 milliamps. And now I'm, now I'm really good, right? So again, this stays at three volts. Uh, so this op amp is gonna insulate or isolate the resistor network from the current demands of the LED. Anyway, that's the idea. Uh, 
please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.